So this is the next little project that I'm working on. Just to cover the speaker box with this, uh, it's just an outdoor carpet, kind of a tough material. Um, but it'll be more functional than what's here now. The trick is to somehow get this out of the truck. Because now, this is the sub box and it's attached to the floor. I gotta get under there, unhook the lines from the amp, and then I should be able to get it out. But there's like a sheet and a half of MDF of just in weight here, so that'll be a trick to do alone. But it'll be nice to finally get it finished. Just spent about 20 minutes back here, I think. I added some split loom and I just cleaned everything up because it was a mess. So now I've got everything bundled nicely together. This is all signal uh, out and in. And then I've got my power split up on the other end of it all with my remote triggers. Um, I'm just trying to make it look nice. I know it's hidden underneath the uh, speaker box itself, but that doesn't mean that I don't know it's there. Uh, so, i got to get the vacuum in here and suck out the sawdust. Because this is back from when I put the box in the first time, I believe. So I'm going to clean up the back of the truck. And I'm going to try to put some carpet on that thing. I got a heat gun, so I'll be able to warm the carpet up to really make it shape the way I want. And uh, I think I got a staple gun around here somewhere, along with some contact cement. So that ought to do the trick. That were a step in the right direction. Okay, well, I got started. Um, maybe you can see the staples on the edge there. But uh, that's what I wanted to start with, with some staples, just to make sure that everything stays put. I did spray some glue on it as well. Um, I'm going to try to do glue as I lay it out, but I'm going to work at it a little bit at a time and slowly staple it in. Of course, I can't have a tighter working area, right? right. It's starting to get chilly outside, and I don't want to move the truck, so this is what I've got. But I'm going to keep working at it, and we're going to see what we end up with. I think it'll be nice when it's done. At the very least, it'll be functional. So. Well, I've got the base stapled here. It's getting pretty flat. I worked my way up to the back edge of the box. I'm using just a scrap piece of wood and I'm placing it against the carpet hitting it with the hammer to make this corner really nice and tight and then right behind that 2x6 I'm hitting it with the stapler to keep that corner nice and tight on the bottom and on the back so that way it shouldn't peel back and it's going to look nice um, so I'm going to work on that all the way across and that should help keep everything square also um, and then afterwards I'm going to trim everything and tack it all on the sides but so far it's working out. Those are shadows, not uh, wrinkles. But it's coming along. So we'll have to uh, keep working at it. My battery's almost dead, so uh, yeah, that's that. I know this isn't much to look at right now, but uh, it's stapled up to the top of the box. I took everything out of the box. I'm going to change my wiring over. I've got some 10 gauge that I just haven't used in here. So rather than doubling up this uh, 14, I'm going to go with the 10 which is a lot nicer wire. So in the back of the truck, I've still got everything sitting. It's all nice and clean looking now, and I'm going to just touch everything up as I go through. I'm also, oh, there we go. I'm also going to try a little experiment with my port tubes. If you look, now there's some foam in there. And I've got, uh, I think, three layers, or four layers in there right now. And I'm thinking that it might get rid of, uh, I've got an air rushing sound. I'm going to try basically putting that in the tube just to restrict the air only a little bit, but still let it flow through. And maybe it's going to make that uh, that sound that I'm getting when the air is traveling through the ports, maybe it'll make that disappear. And who knows, it might make it louder, it might make it quieter, but that's the fun of experimenting. You can try it, you can fix it, and then you can try it again, and that's that.
Almost there. Well, um, like I said, I've got the back of the truck nice and clean now. And here's the box. All carpeted up. It actually turned out really nice. Um, I'm going to put the speakers and the ports back in once it's inside the cat and once it's inside the truck because for me to lift this thing, it's quite an adventure. Um, and then I can position it so it's not pinching any wires and make sure it's all good underneath. I can run my new, you see the red pile there, a new 10 gauge for the uh, subs. Get those guys wired up. Um, but I can usually do the rest of the work from inside the truck, which is good. So I'm going to find a way with my whole two feet of space to get this thing back in the truck. Well, that was not easy in the least, but it's definitely inside the truck now. And the fit is really nice. I think it looks great all the way around here. Now I'm going to put the uh, subs back in. i got to run my wires to the amp and hook them onto the amp. That's still easy to do because I can just tilt the box forward and do everything underneath where the amps are at. And then we're good to go. I was just running my wire there, 8 gauge, and I looked at my uh, my subs, and, oh, here. Anyways, I was looking at my subs, and I'm looking, I'm going, oh yeah, that's right, I have them set for 4 ohms, and so I'm thinking about how I'm going to wire it. And then I look at the jumpers that I've got on my subs, and I think to myself, wait a second, I said to myself, 10 gauge, I got something a little bit better than that. There's some 8 gauge. So I'm going to run 8 gauge instead for my for my subs rather than this 10. My mistake, just so everybody's aware, I'm running two 10 inch subs in this box and they are dual 2 ohm voice coils. <clears throat> so what I've done is I've jumped the negative to the positive on the two coils. So that gives me one coil now with a positive and a negative. And that 2 ohm coil combined with the other 2 ohm coil now becomes a 4 ohm coil. So what happens now is I have a 4 ohm sub and a 4 ohm sub and I want to hook them together. My amp, my amp is a, able to run at 2 ohms so in order to do that I'm going to take a positive line from this subwoofer and bring it through the box to the positive line on this subwoofer and I'm going to take the negative from this subwoofer and attach it to the negative from this subwoofer and then from there they're going to tee off and go out to the amplifier. Um, so I'm sure there's a nicer way to do it, probably with a terminal block, but for the time being, I've just joined the three wires together. So this gives me one line that goes back to the amplifier with the positive cable, and it'll jump to the back of the uh, positive coil of that. Same thing with the negative here. Um, so what that does now is you've now combined your two 4 ohm coils together, in a way that's actually going to make the resistance equal to 2 ohms. So that's just a little quick wiring diagram of what, I, what I've done inside of this box. So I'm running a 2 ohm load with these two subs using dual 2 ohm voice coils. There's a lot of different combinations that you can accomplish with this. Um, when you order a subwoofer and you read the specs and it tells you that the terminals are intended for uh, 8 gauge wire Oops. They weren't kidding. Doesn't get any tighter than that. But I think the monster cable's a little bit oversized for 8 gauge. But man, if you're not if you strip it and you screw up the end of the wire, there's no chance you're ever getting it in there. But once it's in there, that's it. Just a little bit of movement and it's tight. That's something else. So, like I said, I've got them hooked together. So that T, the T here, if you want to think of it that way, wire goes straight back to the amplifier, one goes to this subwoofer, and one goes to the other subwoofer. So I'm running 4 ohms per sub, a 2 ohm load on the amplifier. Like I was saying, inside this tube, if you look, I'll go just to the outside edge, which is here. So 
I've got it filled with uh, some of this. It's actually like floor of scrubbers. I'm thinking that it's going to act as kind of a buffer for the air traveling through. And hopefully it's going to try to eliminate some of the... I have like a gushing sound from the ports. And I'm hoping that this is going to help fix it. We'll try. If it doesn't work, it's just four screws for the port to come out, so it's not a big problem. But Oops. That box looks so much nicer now that it's got some finished product on it. So this is in the back of the truck now. And what I gotta do to get to my amps ah, lift this guy. So then push through. And these get routed to the uh, to the kicker to run those subs. I'm gonna go put a block on the other side so it doesn't fall right on its face. Oh, you know what? It balances. Magic. I got a marked here, positive and negative. I just coated the ends rather than buying different color wire. Just in this situation, it was easier. Well, for those of you who aren't familiar with my videos, um, I've got two runs of one aught power wire straight from the battery all the way to the back here. I'm running a Kicker ZX2500.1 for my two 10 inch Pioneer Premier Pros. And I've just got an Alpine, uh, looks like MRP P300 running my mids and highs in my custom center console. Um, there we go. Under the hood, I've got a 300 amp alternator. Uh, I lied, it's a 350 amp alternator. There she is. And I've got one aught runs to the battery. Oh, I got my thermal down there. Inside the truck, my head unit is Pioneer. And I've got Rockford mids and highs in the center here. Six and a half inch component with a one inch tweeter, and I've got four of those woofers and four tweeters. Let's see. There we go. So, I just finished wiring up my uh, subs. They've been running a long time before, but uh, I just finally carpeted the box. So now I'm going to close it all up because it's going to keep the sound out and I'm going to play a little bit of music also the entire truck if you listen, let's, I'll compare that's an outside panel the entire truck has got dynamite absolutely everywhere the roof, I did the pillars, I did down on the walls I did beneath the seats on the floor all the way up to the firewall. I also did the inside of the door panels. So this half of the door is done, not the outer skin. When you shut these doors with, you, with yourself inside, your ears almost pop because everything's so airtight. So you can imagine the uh, reflex from that bass hitting your chest, just the feeling that it gives you. It's pretty great. So let's, let's hear it. That's enough talk. So the truck's not running right now, just so everybody's aware. Because uh, it's just about 11 o'clock at night, and if I open the garage door, the sound is going to carry pretty far, and I don't want to do that. Not until tomorrow. Fucking with my other bitch. Fucking all night, nigga, we ain't sell a bitch. Nigga, say I'm too dope, I ain't selling it. Motherfucking pepper, man. Go, go, let him in. Last king, kill the shit. Young, young, money, young, money, young, we get. It's grandma on my dick. Girl, you know what it is. Rack city, bitch. Rack, rack city, bitch. I gotta be careful because I'm going under voltage with the amp. Normally, when it's running, I'm at like, uh,. When it's running, I'm somewhere around 14.4, and right now it's sitting at 11. Um, that's assuming that this gauge is accurate. And I'm 
also hitting the base, so I'm probably dropping to like 8 volts. We don't want to do that too long. It's a good way to wreck stuff, especially electronics. But tomorrow we will have a hell of a demo with this and with those new baffles installed. And I, I'm suspecting that they're going to make the base a little bit tighter. We'll see if I can get more volume out of it and maybe I'll actually be able to hear it outside the truck now. That'd be kind of cool because everything's been so dynamited that uh, it's just quiet. On the windshield there, I've got two more packages of uh, these LED lights. I've got those obviously under the dash. You can see one on each side. And my favorite ones are probably in the dash. Sorry, I know that beep is annoying. But I've got two of those strips inside the dash to light the dash up. And I've got two of those strips in the grill, lighting the grill. Let's see, I'll show you that. <coughs> So I want to get two more, I've got them, and I want to put them under the hood just to light up the engine a little bit because now that it's been rebuilt, it's so clean, I can't justify not lighting it up just because it would look nice and why not show it off? Put so much work into it and time and effort, I think it would be uh, something worth putting some lights in there and one of those just because moments, you know.